Whoa, guys, welcome to the video. I'm having to film this intro preemptively, or actually after the fact, because look at that Hemi in the background. God, there ain't a better looking engine than a 426. Hey, baby, what's up? Anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. This video is all about remanning the cylinder heads on our 361 industrial big block Chrysler out of our C800 uh, truck build we're building a ramp truck out of. Um, just want to show you guys that anybody can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. So this video will detail remanning one of the cylinder heads. Of course, it's all the same saying. You go to the other head, which I still need to do. But hope you guys enjoy it. We actually show you us fixing the valves, which is a really cool little deal. We get those unstuck using some clever hillbilly engineering with the heater. So hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys soon. Oh, welcome back, everybody. Good here with Dad. Wow, this looks like a Cheech and Chong movie set in here. <laughs> so we're working on the truck parts. We don't know if this is going to be a separate video. I kind of want it to be on remanning these heads alone because we got every intake valve on this head stuck open and one on this one. So we're doing an experiment. Look at it. Look at it. It's closing on its own. Look at that. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, it did. <laughs> Kill that. I learned that back in Apollo. So that valve was stuck open and my first thought was just get the little map gas torch and heat up the valve guide. Well, and then Dad had the idea of setting it up in front of the space heater. And what the head get up to like 200 degrees? Yeah, it's about 140. Okay. The valve was at 200. Yeah, that's fine. That's intake valve. So, uh, yeah, they just freed up that valve. That's cool. So I've been, we'd heat it up and then we'd use coil on it. And that last time I put coil in, I watched the coil literally seep into the guide. And we do have a fan blowing, by the way, to get most of these fumes out of our direction. So, hey, if we let that cool down, and if I can tap that valve and it'll stay open, or it'll shut on its own, that head's good All right, to go. here's the operation. That's the head we just got on unsticking. See how far open those valves are? They're fully open. Someone was trying to tap them open. So, let the heat do its job. Let some coil soak in and hopefully they all start working again. Alright, so seven minutes and 30 seconds later and 400 degrees a cylinder head. Yeah, I know, that's pretty warm. But uh, they're all shut now. So I've been working on this head a little bit. Obviously everything needs to be completely disassembled and cleaned. Uh, this valve that was stuck open leaks like a sieve. This one is a baby drip. So all these valves will probably come out and of course get relapped. I could use the valve seat grinder and everything, but now we're gonna do this the cheap, easy way. So, all right, well now we got all the heads done. Now we just gotta let these things cool off because that thing's 400 degrees now. And it's kind of fun to watch all the smoke, other than we have been dummies and we've been standing out in this smoke. Looks like a, like I said earlier, a Cheech and Chong set almost. <laughs> well, we got her. Hell yeah, Dad. By the way, I'm only wearing blue bitch mittens because I don't want to get covered in this old truck grease. It's, it's not uh, very kosher. Normally I wouldn't be wearing these, but yeah. When you touch your cylinder head and that's what comes off on your finger, yeah, I don't want that on me. All right, we'll check back in. All righty, guys and gals, so I get a little bit of flag about, you know, not always taking the cheapest route. Well, I'm gonna return to my roots with this truck. We're doing everything old school, at least the way I used to do things. So here's half of the truck's head, cleaned off with just nothing but a wire wheel and a grinder. And that's what it started as. I'm gonna give you a little A to B. So I used to clean heads up. We'll be pulling the valves out, cleaning everything inside and out, and then we'll be relapping all these valves. These are sodium filled exhaust valves and then there's a special blend of steel for the intake valves. But uh, yep, we're gonna be taking care, not gonna be taking away too much material and not getting crazy with it. We're not going out with a flat disc. Just good old wire wheel, it ain't gonna hurt this iron. All right, 
Let's finish this. All right, so up. about 20 minutes later, now we have a head we can touch without getting completely filthy. Had a bunch of deposits on the exhaust valves, not a big deal. Got those mostly clean. The main goal here is so we can sit in our solvent tank and just soak for a while, and then we'll get all the valve disassembled and work on those guides a little bit, make sure everything's still square. And Alrighty, so the other head is all cleaned up and bare, good looking. So now we're gonna mark all these valve springs, retainers, and locks, and we're gonna bag them up so that way they go back on the same valve on the same cylinder, just being cautious here. I know the exhaust have the rotators, so don't wanna get those mixed up, but the intakes at least. So start disassembling these and get these ready to be remade. Right, so now we're gonna do valve disassembly work. That's a big heavy cylinder head. I don't know if that's even in frame. Yeah, the tripod's blocking it. Okay, so there's our truck head, valve spring compressor. This one we cobbled together, it was broken and mismatched, so we uh, made it work for our purposes. This is a very handy tool to have, I mean, you really need to have one of these if you're going to get into doing any kind of engine work. And you just want to get that adjusted where it compresses it enough. We're going to add a clip to that. And these keepers should eventually fall out. There we go. And slowly release. And there we'll go the retainer. That is our rotator retainer. It Spins in on itself. And this engine actually has a double valve spring assembly. Look at that. That's a true spring with inner spring. That's pretty wild. Let's see if this. Yep. <coughs> There's one of our exhaust valves. See how much bigger it is? Okay. Then we're going to put that there. Valve springs to match it. Now we're going to do all the rest on this head. We'll show you once we're done. Okay, I haven't even looked at the valve seats yet. Uh, yeah, they look pretty good actually. So I'm starting to think maybe this engine was freshened up at one time, maybe. I don't know. Because uh, this is the head that had the four stuck intake valves. And you see my tool range here. Exhaust valves fell right out, which you saw that. Intake valves, every single one of these that was stuck had to start out with, I was using this dead blow, and that lasted so long, just a lot of beating. So I brought out the big brass mallet. That made quick work of them so it didn't mar the tips of the valves or bend them. And then I had to get a chisel out to get it started. And that's when I brought out my snap-on dead blow there. And then I had to get a push rod <laughs> to run those intake valves all the way out. And I... I'm wondering if they just didn't ream these out because there's really no issues. I mean, the exhausts are beautiful, but there's really no issues on the intakes. A little bit of stuff in there, but nothing that would require you to drive your valves out. So I don't know what's going on with that. I'm going to clean all those up and I'll be doing some measurements and checking those with the book. But uh, now this head's fully disassembled. Now I can start cleaning all the internal parts because... Uh, Little scrubbing Alrighty, so now we're cleaning up our valve. So here's an example of an intake valve after I cleaned it. Focus. Much better versus that. So I chuck it in the lathe loosely, take a wire wheel and just run it over there lightly, knock all the crap off. Yeah, that's what I'm doing all now. Right, and there's all of our valves cleaned up. Now I'm gonna soak the valve springs and retainers and locks in the degreaser. And they should be ready to go. You gotta do some measuring on these intake valves and figure out why they're so tight. But we'll work on that here in a second. Okay, guys, gals, it has been a long day of just working on this one head, perfecting everything. So, as you will remember, I talked about the intake valves not wanting to go in and out. They were getting sticky. Not anymore. And there's no flex in the guide. It's all good. It's real nice. So, and of course, all of the exhausts were always really nice. So what I ended up doing is I pulled out a book. I noticed that when I'm having trouble, this is the only one that hasn't gone in yet, is it's real stiff right there. And a lot of them, you can kind of twist them in. And I was noticing that was kind of scraping things up. So I decided I'm going to go to an old school timer trick here. 
One of my first Mopar mentors, John Wise here in town, told me before you take your valves out or before you put them back in, always run a file on this top edge right here where the rocker arm's beating on it can mushroom it. So I ended up going, huh, I wonder why these are all so stiff. Now, the last time I did this on this valve right here, this one was real hard to push in and out, and so is this one. Put them on the lathe, chucked them up, put a little extra chamfer there, filed that flat, and now they all fly right in and have no issues. So just show you this one. You can kind of get her going, but it's real stiff. And it should just fall right in there and have a nice suction cup seal. So check her up. And I'll show you. Alrighty, so we got this valve. We just shined it up. Cleaned out the guide one more time. Look at that. So another thing you can do if you're curious that your valve guides are good other than just wiggling them to make sure there ain't no movement. What I'll do is I'll put my finger over there and I got oil in there and I'll use that oil to seal that up. And you'll actually feel a suction on that and you'll feel a drag on the valve. And that'll tell you that's all working right. Which all of these are good, which is amazing. So now we're just gonna get some lapping compound, lap those back in. Every valve is back where it belongs, but I want to relap them, make sure we got a good contact, make sure these are sealing up real nice. And then a final clean, final assembly. That's one head done, and we can go do the other one. All right, guys and gals, so I apologize for space heater noise. You're gonna hear it's just about 20 degrees here in Kansas. It's supposed to warm back up here in a little bit, but regardless, it's 20 degrees, it's colder than balls in the garage, so. We just lay dike them down in all the valve seats. Everything's numbered. Got all the valves dike as well. Now we're gonna take some valve grinding compound and we're gonna put a little bit on each of these seats. And we're either gonna use my hand drill, which I got a special little drill for lapping in valves, or I'll just do my old school little trick with a regular drill. And we're gonna lap all these valves in, make sure they seal up good. And his head's gonna sit in the pressure in the parts washer for however long it takes me to do all the same stuff I did to this head. To that head which we're not gonna bother showing you all that but you're showing you this is all stuff anybody can do so a little bit of dicum that'll show us our wear pattern and make sure it's all the way around so do that we'll check all back right, in so it's kind of a long tedious process is how we did on my baby hemi I tried my actual valve grinding tool and the suction cup on it's no good it's old it's from the 40s so take a drill bit a little piece of hose a couple clamps drill and this valve, if I can get it to stay up, I'll show you. See now we got a nice seat area. I just oiled it down to clean it. Um, we got a nice surface there and we got a nice surface all the way around the valve now. And that baby seals up beautifully. It's really nice. Now I'm gonna do it to all the rest of these. And uh, I'll show you. All right, more. there's all of our freshly ground seats everything's looking really good clean the valves up ready to rock and roll just a little bit of elbow grease a little bit of lapping compound which you can buy at any parts store a little hillbilly jig here for running your valves and as long as you don't have big pits that'll work that'll seal them up all right i want to show you something <clears throat> let me just try and prop you up right here all right, so let me show you what you're kind of after. So we're gonna go right here to number four. Watch the intake valve. So I'm taking my finger, get a little bit of oil on I'm gonna put it right on the intake valve guide. I'm gonna block it off. I'm gonna try and pull it out. Look at that. See that suction? That is exactly what we're after. And when I try to push it back in, it is fighting me because it's pushing my finger off. It's got that good of a seal. That is exactly what we're after. And we're just making sure everything's nice and clean. And she's gonna go into the parts washer, get all the copper, lapping compound mostly cleaned off. You're not gonna get it all, so that's why we put in the pressure or parts washer. Dissolve all the rest of that compound. And that head will soon be done. Just thought that was really neat. There we go. Wow, that's a big jump in video. I apologize about that. I was talking with my great friend Tall John at Tall John's Fun Shop. He is on YouTube. Really cool cat. I highly recommend you go check him out. Just a little plug for him. So, everything's assembled now except for one valve. I'm going to show you to do that in case you don't know. 
Uh, intakes have a valve stem seal. The umbrella and exhaust do not. It won't clear the double valve spring. And this thing didn't have them from the factory, so we're doing it. Okay, so you want to make sure your valves are nice and lubed up. Everything spins nice. Doesn't make a bunch of noise, which it doesn't. I got a little bit of this WD-40 gel lube I'm using. So if you've got shims, which these intake valves have two shims underneath them, you want to put them back. Exhaust do not, and they got this rotator cup, so you get your valve, you get your springs on there. That's where you get out your valve spring compressor again. Get her on there. This is kind of a chore to do by yourself sometimes, but you get her. There we go. <clears throat> get our spring compressed, and now you'll see you got your little grooves there for your locks. If you don't know what locks are, those are your locks. And there's are different between intake and exhaust, so please don't mix those up. So we're gonna take a little bit of lube, we're gonna put it right here on the tip of the valve. Where these locks go, that was a lot. And then we're just gonna real carefully Make sure we put them in the right way. You're gonna put one in there. We're gonna slide it around, get lube all throughout. And once they're both sitting in there, you're gonna try and gently release the spring compressor. And then your valve spring is attached. And then it's as simple as taking a mallet. Give it a couple of taps to make sure it's fully seated. And there, you're done. And that is one of our 360 truck heads fully assembled, ready to go back in the truck. Every hole has been tapped and cleaned out. Yeah, the inside of here didn't get the cleanest, but it's clean enough for the truck. Nothing the uh, diesel engine oil won't take care of, which is what we're going to run is 1540 Rotella. We run that in everything. So with this head done, I'm gonna do the other one and then we're basically good to go. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this little video just for you guys, showing you that anybody, if I can do it, you can do it. Remanning our cylinder head for that 361 big truck engine, our C800 or D800, whatever the designation is for that big Dodge truck. As you can see, I still have a lot of parts to do before I can get that video done. Hopefully we're gonna get that thing running. Don't know yet, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. But here's our cylinder head, completely done. I shoved a valve cover on it, the funky valve cover. Take that back off. And there's our rocker assemblies, which I've already cleaned, restored, and prettied up. Of course, you got the bolt-on stanchions, the earlier style. I may have those on backwards. The uh, might, might need the other rocker shaft. I just kind of threw them on there. But uh, there's the head. Everything's working pretty good. Valve seal real nice. And uh, basically this principle applies to any cylinder head for any car. Doesn't matter if it's a Chrysler, or Chevy, Ford, don't matter. You can do this at home. Now, of course, if you can't just lap the valves in, if they're sunken or they're big chips missing, you're gonna need valves. And it might be a good idea to get the seats cut. This is kind of just the old school way of making it work and good enough. These heads are luckily in pretty good shape, so we didn't have to get real crazy with machine shop or cutting new valve seats or cutting the valves. So just hope this inspires someone to get out there and get some work done regardless. My back may be hurting. I may be cold, but you know what? We're getting stuff done. So as always, guys, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. So take care and bye-bye.